at the start of each piece, you will hear this sound. Part 1. You will hear people talking in eight different situations. For questions 1 to 8, choose the best answer, A, B, or C. 1. You hear someone describing something that happened to her. How did she feel? A. Annoyed. B. Confused. C. Disappointed. Well, I've been in this country for about a year, and I thought I knew the way things were. <laughs> but I obviously didn't have a grasp on some things. I thought that you were supposed to take a present on occasions like that, but I was the only one who did. I felt pretty bad because I was expecting that everyone else would have done the same. So I didn't really know what was going on, only that I'd got it wrong. 2. You hear part of a radio play. Where are the speakers? A. In a taxi. B. At an airport. C. At home. I think we're going to miss it. Um, did you lock up and switch everything off? Stop worrying. Everything's under control. I checked everything. Have you got the tickets and the passports? Yes, they're in my pocket. Look, we're not going to be late. We've only got a short way to go. But we're supposed to arrive an hour before the flight. I know, but don't worry. It's only round the corner now. 3. You hear this announcement in a supermarket. What does the announcer want customers to do? A. Leave the building now. B. Buy a certain product. C. Use a particular exit. We would like to inform all customers that our opening hours are from 8am to 7pm every day and that we will shortly be closing. There is still time for you to take advantage of the numerous bargains available in the store, such as the fresh bread, and we hope that you will do so. Please leave through the door behind the checkouts, as the other doors are about to be locked. Thank you. 4. You hear two people talking on a railway station platform. What is the relationship between them? A. They are strangers. B. They are colleagues. C. They are neighbours. Do you catch this train very often? Yes, quite regularly. I have meetings in London about every two weeks. Do you find it an easy journey? It depends. It can take me quite a long time to get here from the area where I live. But sometimes it's not too bad. How about you? I live just round the corner, so it's no problem for me. I go quite regularly on business as well. Ah, the train's coming now. Right on time. Five. You hear someone describing a trip. What did she do during the trip? A. She spent a lot of money. B. She visited a lot of famous places. C. She met a lot of people. I had a great time, actually. I did all the tourist things and I saw all the sights. But what's wrong with that? I mean, if you go to such a historic city, there's no point in just sitting around in cafes or spending all your time with the other people in the party, is there? There were loads of really good souvenirs in some of the places I went to, but they cost a fortune, so I didn't bother with them. 6. You hear the presenter of a local radio news programme. Who is he going to interview? A. A member of the public. B. A local reporter. C. A senior politician. The recent elections have produced some surprising results. So let's find out what's behind this story. Our reporter, Jackie Walsh, has already spoken to the winners and losers and found out their theories. But what about the people who decided the issue? Jackie knows the area better than most, and she's been out and about gathering opinions from the people who really count, the voters themselves. So 
Let's find out her conclusions. Seven. You hear someone describing the place where she lives. What does she think of the place? A. It is dangerous. B. It is strange. C. It is interesting. I've heard a lot of people saying how risky it is around here, and you hear all these stories about violence and burglaries and all that. But I mean, maybe my experience is totally out of the ordinary. But I've never come across any of that. For me, it's just a place full of the most fantastic mixture of people. I mean, there's always something going on. It's just so full of of life. <laughs> Eight. You hear an announcement about a radio program. What kind of program is it? A, a sports program. B, a holiday program. C, a health program. Feeling run down? Not getting enough exercise? Need a break? Then you'd better listen to Getting Away from It All at eight thirty on Tuesday, where you'll get all sorts of ideas for doing something about it. From a gentle round of golf to a weekend of intensive workouts at a health club, we'll be covering places to suit all pockets. And also, there'll be a special feature on bargain destinations for late bookings. Don't miss it. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two. You will hear part of a local radio program in which the presenter gives details of a competition. For questions nine to eighteen, fill in the missing information. Okay. Finally, we come to the competition I mentioned at the start of the program. It's for any of you out there who fancy yourselves as radio reporters, and it's open to anyone of any age who is living, working, or studying in this area. Perhaps you've listened to this station and thought, "I can do better than that." <laughs> well, this is your chance. Now, if you want to go in for the competition, what you have to do is to put together and send in a short report on tape of up to four minutes in length that deals with something to do with this area. It could be about almost anything, as long as it's connected with this area. You see, what we want you to send in are pieces which capture the special nature of the area. It's people, what goes on here, the things that people care about here, that kind of thing. You might want to go out and interview people, or you could simply describe something, or both. It's up to you. What about the prizes? Well, the top prize for the best report overall is the magnificent Rubicon 2000 portable tape recorder. It's what the professionals use when they're out on a story. It's got a separate microphone for conducting on-the-spot interviews and all the latest in new technology for the professional reporter. In addition, there will be prizes of Candida XR tape recorders for the most interesting subject, the best interview, and the most imaginative presentation. Right. If you want to go in for this competition, here are the details. First of all, the different categories you can enter reports for. Well, there are two main categories. The first is for local personalities and activities. For this, you might choose as your subject someone well known in your district or a local sports event or festival, for example. The second is for issues of importance in the area today. You might, for example, compile a report about an environmental matter such as traffic problems for this category. In addition, there's a special category for entries from schools because we're very keen to get as many of the local schools as possible involved. In this category, we're offering two cash prizes of five hundred pounds each, and the money can be used for the purchase of any equipment needed by the school. It's up to the winners what they choose. Entries for this category are invited not from individuals but from school classes, and teachers may wish them to be related to a special project. Which could be organised between now and the closing date of July the eighth. Our expert judges are going to select the six best reports sent in, and these will be broadcast on September the sixth on a special programme on this station, Our Society Today. Anyone entering the competition should make sure that they submit their reports on good quality tape. Remember, they're going to be broadcast, and very important. Make sure that your tape is clearly labelled with your name and address, 
which category your report is being entered for, and its title. Entries clearly marked Radio Reporter Competition on the envelope should arrive here no later than 4 p.m. on Friday, July the 8th. Now, if you want us to send your tape back, you'll have to supply us with a stamped self-addressed envelope of a suitable size. And if you want to pick it up in person here at the radio station, which you can do at the end of September, you should mark the envelope for collection, and we'll put it on one side to hand over to you when you come in. So get out there and start your reports, and good luck. I'll be back at the same time next week with another edition of the program. So until then, goodbye. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part three. You will hear five different radio reports. For questions nineteen to twenty-three, choose from the list A to F what each reporter is reporting on. Use the letters only once. There is one extra letter which you do not need to use. Well, an enormous crowd has turned out. Although the mood seems to be a good one, it's quite obvious how they feel and how much ordinary people oppose the whole idea. There are people from all walks of life here, including a lot of workers on their lunch break. At the moment, they're listening to the various speakers. A few minutes ago, there was an enormous cheer when they were told that there were about fifty thousand of them, and that figure alone indicates just what public opinion is on this matter. The crowds came pouring onto the streets immediately afterwards, and they're making their reaction to this victory clear in no uncertain terms. Everywhere I look, there are lines of people coming along the streets from all directions, arms linked, shouting and singing, and it really is the most incredible scene. People are greeting complete strangers as if they've known them all their lives. There's never been anything like it in the history of this city. As I sit here, I sense an enormous tension among the crowd. A sense of great anticipation. Normally, you'd expect a lot of noise, a lot of singing and chanting, but this is such an important day for all the supporters of both sides, with so much to be won and so much to be lost. There's only a matter of what four or five minutes to go before the start, and so. Soon we'll find out who's going to be dancing with joy and who's going to be bitterly disappointed. Well, it's obviously been very well supported, and it certainly seems to have had an effect. A lot of people have probably decided they might as well stay at home, but many more have obviously decided to make their way by other means. There's a lot of traffic on the roads, and plenty of people have chosen to walk. The leaders say that everything should be back to normal tomorrow, and it's possible that further talks will take place tomorrow. But for the time being, it's chaos for many. Well, there's certainly a very special atmosphere in the air for what is a very special occasion. People have been pouring into the stadium from all over, and there are queues stretching for miles. Expectations among the fans are high for what will be their first live appearance for years. And it's obvious that whatever the critics say, these fans remain loyal. I think that when they finally step onto the stage, they're going to go just wild. That is the end of part three. Now turn to part four. You will hear part of a radio phone-in program in which teenagers give advice on relationships between parents and children. For questions twenty-four to thirty, write why for yes. Next to those views that are expressed by any of the speakers, and N for no. Next to those views that are not expressed. I hope that's been of some use. Moving along, we've got Jane on the line. Good evening, Jane. Good evening. Hi. Who would you like to speak to, Jane? Well, anybody who might have been through the fourteen to eighteen-year-old age range, which I'm sure they all have,、uh, with regard to.、Um, That awful subject of helping in the house. <laughs> I've got a fourteen. Oh yeah, I can hear everybody laughing. I've got a fourteen-year-old boy and an eighteen-year-old boy. Ah,、uh, I have given up with the eighteen-year-old about his bedroom. <laughs> I decided that he needed his space, and if he wished to live in a rubbish tip, 
then so be it. So I've simply closed the door on it. But it is the fact that I work, well, practically full time. Um, and I could do with a bit of help around the house. But the usual response when I ask them is, well, well either they're doing something else or whichever son it is. Um, uh, or, you know, it's a case of, why can't he do it? Meaning his brother. Or if they do actually get round to doing it, then it's not very well done. If it's washing up, they have water all over the floor. Uh, any tips? Nick, have you got something to say about this? Well, this sounds like more or less the same relationship that I had with my mum until she discussed it with me. I'm 16, and if my mother, um, if she needs help around the house, we have a sort of agreement that, uh, I clean up behind myself, I do any other jobs which look like they should be done, and I often repair things around the house and things like that. So, if you maybe tell your children that this is what you want them to do, that they should at the very minimum clean up behind themselves and then do any other jobs that they feel they should do, that sounds to me like a fair agreement. And if you try that, it might work. Amelia? Well, the fact is, your children really aren't children anymore. And you shouldn't really let them get away with it. They're old enough, you know, to realise. And it's not fair, you know. You're their mother, and they really should be doing what... I mean, they live under your roof. I think that all parents have a standard set of rules, and that should be one of the rules. That they should do their share around the house. I think your view on, you know, letting your son leave his room, you know, a mess is a very satisfactory one, and one that all parents should adopt. But really, you know, you're treating them like children if you don't really insist that they help you in the house. Because your sons, especially your older son, they're going to be leaving soon, to be leaving home to go to university or something, and they're not going to have mummy there to do the washing up. They should start learning now that, you know, chores should be shared in a family. Well, Jane, it seems that the answer to all this is that you're letting them off the hook. You tell them they can't get away with it any longer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're moving on now. If you want to speak to this panel tonight, the number is 01325 580 4444. If you want to speak to our panel about any subject to do with parent-children relationships. That is the end of part four.